Good morning. You're watching PA Harness Week. I'm Charlotte McBride. Well, last Saturday was Derby Day, as you all know. And on this show, I said that I was going to put my money on Dortmund. Well, I didn't put my money on Dortmund to win. I put my money on Dortmund to show. And here's the winning ticket to prove it. I also ended up picking American Pharaoh to win, which we all know that he did. And coming up later in the show, you'll get to see me on Derby Day, my hat and men's julep and all. Stay tuned, and here's what you can expect to see in this next half hour. And a great Derby Day it was here at Harris and up in the Poconos. We've got the pictures to prove it. It was also All-Star Saturday at Pocono, and we take a ride to Ohio and Jersey for some big stakes races you won't want to miss. Racing's fastest paced half hour starts right now on Comcast Sportsnet. They're off. Kim Asami and welcome to PA Harness Week. She's Heather Vitale, I'm Steve Ross. And Heather, I gotta tell you something. On the way to work here today, well, can't really call this work. It's play. Yeah, you know, on the way to Harris yeah. today, <laughs> I was following a truck on 295 and it said Burris on the back. And immediately I thought of, come on, come on, what I think of? Uh, Press Burris Jr. Preston Burris Jr., who was a longtime regular on the Delaware Valley Liberty Bell Brandywine Circuit. And of course, while he didn't drive any exceptional horses, well, he actually did. There was one. Do you remember who that, that lady was? Uh, silk stockings. Oh, <laughs> no, good I totally guess. Knew that. Yeah, not a guess. Nice I, job. Oh, I've seen so many of her races. She was, I think, 1972 Pacer of the Year. Mm. I believe she was. I think you're yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. And she, Delawarean, right? Delaware owned, and Press Burris was a first stater, right? Yes, that's exactly right. Oh, the memories. And the crowd goes wild. Yes. We've got to talk about the Derby Day on Saturday. Big doings of both here at Harris and at Pocono, where they had a turnaway crowd. Unbelievable amount of people up there, right? Yeah, yeah. And they had their hat derby, which is an extremely popular event. So I just want to mention who the winners were. Dawn from Wyoming. What? Wyoming, <laughs> Wyoming, Delaware, or I'm sorry, Wyoming, Pennsylvania. Now oh. I got Delaware on the brain. Um, she was the grand prize winner. A thousand dollars. A thousand? She got a yes. dime for that? Yeah. Don't go away. I'm no good for you, but the money is. June from Harvey's Lake. She won five hundred dollars for second place, and then Teresa from Wilkesbury. She was. The, the third place finisher. She got 250 bucks. All right, Way so it's a girls. great day. And the hats have become such a big thing. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they were amazing. They did such a great job. Everybody that came to be part of the Derby, thank you. Well, we can't just talk about it. We have to show you what kind of a big day it was up at Pocono on Derby Day. If that looked like it was a lot of fun, it's because it was. <laughs> All those amazing, what do you call those hats, fascinators? Oh yes, fascinators, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. What's up with that? Well, they're fascinating. Oh, is that what they are? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and I gotta mention Jen Starr, who never disappoints. The woman has more skimmers for her head, right? Yeah, she's always she wearing hats. Them. I know she does. Yeah, she's and amazing. She is amazing, and she has a little thing I want you to see. It's a picture of her and her little friend. 
You want to see a picture of our little friend? <laughs> his, his name is Ray. Take yeah, a look at this, he right? He dresses like that every day to go to the track, by the way. He's been going to Pocono for decades, and that's how he dresses. Yeah, he really snazzes at all kinds of dapperness. And you guys should be going to Pocono because fun is the best thing to have, and they have tons of that up at Pocono, okay? When we come back, we'll show you the racing that'll be on display at Pocono, where they have great racing all the time. Don't go away. Bandolino working hard to keep off the pressure of Dan Life. It all comes down to the things you do, the places you see, the people you meet. It's all of the beautiful things, the incredible things, and the spectacular things that makes us feel unexplainable things. Life is going on. All you have to do is choose to live it. Full of life. Mohegan Sun Pocono. Welcome back to PA Harness Week. She's Heather Vitale. I'm Steve Ross. And as promised, we're going to go to Pocono. They had a series going on, the Pennsylvania All-Stars. Three and four-year-old Colton Gelding Trotters. And the first one is the seventh on Saturday. And my boo Heather's got that bad boy for you. Yes, I've got the first of four divisions. The first is $32,000. Number three is Don't Mind Me. He is the favorite in the race coming up. Don't you say anything either. I can't coming up, a third-place finish. Number seven is is boots and chains. Mm. Again, don't say anything, okay? This is a natural <laughs> exact day thing. <laughs> seasonal <laughs> debut here. Number one is Jackson's Minion, driven and trained by Duh, Tom Jackson. Boots and chains making his way to the front end there for Mike Simons. First start of the year for him, and Jackson's Minion going to follow that right up. Simons going to try to sting him, but Tom Jackson and Jackson's Minion, a strong move to the front, clears by about two lengths. Boots and Chain second, then Wimborne Hanover, who was a big winner as a two-year-old. A gap back to Clifton Beach, then it's Red Maple Lane fifth. Don't mind me, four to five favorite, but going to have a long way to go after that earlier break, and uh, Vintage Hall still off stride. The half 57-1, 28 and three second panel. Jackson's minion, Tom Jackson, looking to bottom out this field here as he bullets away by about four lengths. Boots and chains moving steadily back up on the inside. Don't mind me, would you believe, after the early troubles has moved up to third. Now it's Wimborne Hanover for its saving ground. Way back, Red Maple Lane. Vintage Hall also still way back there. Jackson's minion by about a length and a half. Three quarters, 126 even, 28 and four. The third panel, Jackson's minion. Some pressure behind him there from boots and chains. Outside, don't mind me, has come a long way, but appears to be stalling now. And Wimborne Hanover looking for room in side. Top of the stretch. Jackson's minion by about a length and a half. Boots and chains. Comes out of the pocket to chase here. Jackson's minion trying to hold together. Boots and chains on the outside. Digging hard. It's tight to the line. It's boots and chains. Don't mind me. The better's choice. He went off stride early. Uh, and uh, yeah, I know. But it's not really out of character for him, actually. He's known for breaking stride and breaking hearts. And a trotter who breaks stride? Yeah, I know, right? Shocking. He was one of three in here, actually, who ended up making bobbles. So Jackson's minion found himself doing the work on the front, but it was boots and chains with the driver, Mike Simon, yes. stalking in the two hole. And he benefited, benefited from a great trip, 155 and one for the win. And it was his first start of 2015. Jackson minion was second. Wimburn Hanover took third. Okay, Saturday's next race, the eighth. Another Pennsylvania All-Stars race, three-year-old Colton Golding Trotters, the second of four divisions, not to be confused with legs. These are divisions, not legs. Okay, number four, Pierre with Scott Zirin was eight to five. Number five, Ferragamo, nine to five with Corey Callahan for Jimmy Tactor. Number two, Pierce Ware Hanover with Jim Worrell Jr. was seven to two, and Jim Bavilla's got that call for you. New leader, real DJ Hanover, has a race since his maiden win here at Pocono back in November. And now Pierce Wave Hanover coming off a layoff as well. He gets to the front for Jim Morrill Jr. Past real DJ Hanover. Pierre, another one coming off a layoff, is the 8-5 to five favorite, and he sits third for Scott Zeron. 
A gap there back to Explosive Brother fourth, followed by Special Action. Inside, Saburo Hanover is sixth, and Ferragamo is on stride, but out of this one, and Saburo Hanover also off stride from the back of the pack there. The half mile, 58 and 1, 29 even second panel, a tick pa uh, faster than the first. Pierce Wave Hanover leading it by about a length. Jim Morrill Jr. has that whip on his left shoulder there, not asking the leader for anything. Real DJ Hanover is staying tight in the pocket. Meanwhile, Pierre losing a bit of ground from his cover third is now four off the pace. Then comes uh, Explosive Brother fourth, followed by Special Action. Saburo Hanover trying to get back into it. Pierce Wave Hanover by a length and a half, three quarters, 127 and three, 29 and two third panel. It's Pierce Wave Hanover still there. Real DJ Hanover getting close once again. Pierre is back in at third, and then Explosive Brother fourth. Top of the stretch, Pierce Wave Hanover by about a length. Outside, Real DJ Hanover. Inside, Pierre. But it's still Pierce Wave Hanover. Now Real DJ Hanover is surging on the outside. It's tight to the line. It's Anka Swanstead and Real DJ Hanover. <laughs> and you say Pierre took the lead before Pierce Wave Hanover took over with number six, Real DJ Hanover, five to one with E.K. Svadenstant in the two hole. I know I butchered that name. And they stayed there to the lane when the Real DJ got his head in front at the wire to win it in 156 and one. Pierce Wave Hanover second and Explosive Brother. I hate to see that happen. A 22 to one with Andrew McCarthy got third. Okay, I'm gonna take over the next division here. Three horses who are getting the most play are actually the three that are making their seasonal debuts. We've got number seven, it's Suit and Tie. He's the better's choice. Number three, Cruzado de la Noche. I believe it means Night Crusader, thanks to four years of high school Spanish. But Doesn't mean don't. I thought. <laughs> that's, that's a perito caliente. Sorry. Yes, all right. Uh, number one is finish line. He's coming off a really good qualifier. Suit and tie using the straightaway to try to take the lead here for Mike Simons. This is a seven to five favorite racing for the first time this year. Working hard to get past Simeon, who doesn't give up the lead easy. Finish line, another coming off a layoff. Launches first over there for Jim Marone Jr. A big gap back to fourth and Cruzado de la Noche, who's got about seven to make up. And even further back to my cousin Vinny and Jetta Doe both struggling at the back. Meanwhile, off stride there is a finish line as he tried to take the lead. The half 50, six and two, 28 even second panel, faster than the first. Up top, suit and tie. Doesn't want to let anybody pass here for Mike Simons. Leads it by about a length. Still in the pocket there, Simeon. And now Cruzada de la Noche starts to move up steadily for Johansson, although still five to make up. A big gap back there to Jedido and my cousin Vinny finish line last after the break. Up top, suit and tie. It'll lead about a length and a half, three quarters, 126 even, 29 and three, third panel. Suit and tie could be in some trouble because Cruzado de la Noche on the outside is revving it up there for Johansson. Further back there to Simeon third and Jedido is fourth. Top of the stretch, suit and tie by about a length. Cruzado de la Noche on the outside, still improving here. It's suit and tie. Cruzado de la Noche on the outside goes on past. Cruzado de la Noche trotted home the fastest. He was in nine lengths off the leader at the half. Wins with Marcus Johansson in the bike in 155 flat. The trotter is trained by Marcus's wife, Nancy Johansson, who also trained the 2014 United States and Canadian Horse of the Year, JK She's a Lady, huh? um, which is cool. Like, if you like that kind of thing, you know, training horses of the year and stuff, I guess. And right? winning and making lots of money. <laughs> yeah, and all that. Oh, and happy Mother's Day to Nancy, by the way. She's also the busy mom of two little kiddos. So, wow. happy Mother's Day to you since it is tomorrow. Okay. Suit and Tide did the work on the front, settled for second third went to Simeon. All right, race 10 was the last, the fourth of four divisions of the Pennsylvania All-Stars. It was a goodie. Number five, Whom Shall I Fear with Corey Callahan. Uh, for Jimmy Tactor was one to nine, and then there were others, all double-digit bombers. Let's have a look. On the sly, second time off the layout being sent early. Here comes Wicker Hanover on the outside, and he's going to take to the pocket instead of trying to get to the front. Meanwhile, whom shall I fear? Off back-to-back -back big performances at the Meadowlands is the 1-9 favorite. He's going to have a first over grind into the clubhouse turn. Danish Durango is fourth. Next up, Q Hall, followed there by the Master, and way, way back to Best Fresh. It's on the sly to the half-mile marker, 57 even, 28-4, second panel. On the sly. 
high. Aggressive up front here by about a length and a half. On the outside, whom shall I fear? Working hard and getting closer with each stride now. Wicker Hanover is in a good spot in the pocket as long as the cover doesn't falter there. On the outside now, Q Hall making a move into fourth, followed by Danish Durango. Whom shall I fear now takes the lead away from on the slide, but having a hard time clearing here as they approach three quarters. 125 and two, 28 and two, third panel. And now whom shall I fear loses the lead back to on the slide. Inside Wicker Hanover, Q Hall trying to come on. Danish Durango not out of it fifth. Top of the stretch on the slide has it by about a head. On the outside, no give yet from whom shall I fear. Inside Wicker Hanover, whom shall I fear. Callahan urging him on. Wicker Hanover sneaking up the inside. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear had only himself to fear. But he won, but not like a one to nine shot is supposed to. Got up a desperate neck, just beating Wicker Hanover, 17 to one bomber with Andrew McCarthy in 155 flat. On the slide, which you may recall, you thoroughbred fans, was a pretty darn good thoroughbred racehorse. And this is a harness horse, though. Off a 10 to one with Georgie Knapp, cut the mile and was length back in third. Le I would have to say something about whom shall I fear. He is the full brother to Father Patrick and Pastor Stephen. Can you imagine, like, how holiday dinners, like <laughs> sitting there like the mom and dad are like, whom shall I fear? Yeah, you know, your older brothers are world <laughs> champions. I mean, one of them are, you know, to have to live up to that. But I, he's looking pretty good I so got far. You. <laughs> the action for Pocono was not done. We had another good one, didn't we? On the nighttime card. On the nighttime card, yes, the Van Rose Memorial, named for a very, very popular writer right there in the Pocono area is a sports writer and he actually did own some harness horses mm. Van Rose great guy goes for fifty thousand dollars number two do me that again coming off a of victory in the Levy at Yonkers number six modern legend um, ships down from Canada for this one and number one Bandolito at the time of this taping right now he is the fastest harness horse in the entire country for 2015. Bandolito in from Delaware with Daryl Beer leads it now by a length pocket seat for do me that again fresh off that big win in the levy he's the two to one favorite pretty evenly bet board here two back to dancing yankee third then comes modern legend in from canada luck be with you is fifth nobody really making a big move here on the front stretch sixth to the outside is uh alexa's memories as they all started to move to the outside simultaneously there all bets off seventh beach memories off stride at the end the half 55 even 28 and four second panel beer rated that very well here with Bandolito. Now on the outside, luck be with that stance and Yankee actually charging up first over for George Knapp. Inside, do me that again, has lost a bit of ground there, but now sneaks back up. Modern Legend second over is now about three back. Boxed in fifth there, Alexis Jackpot, then luck be with you and all bets off. Bandolito still holding tight. Three quarters, 121 and three, 26 and three there on the back. Bandolito working hard to keep off the pressure of Dance and Yankee. Do me that again is on the end inside late kick now from a modern legend and luck be with you top of the stretch it's bandolito beer trying to get more out of him do me that again in the passing lane coming up strong do me that again the levy was no fluke he's gonna pace away and hide do me that again now i don't know if okay. this horse is <laughs> lucky or good or both exactly the same trip as he got in the levy perfect two hole trip he does it again and he wins the Van Rose Memorial. And he sits there right behind Bandolito, who leads the way around the oval. Mm -hmm. So do me that again, wins in 149 flat. Simon Allard, red hot, had him on the show last week for his brother, who is trainer Renee Allard, Alexis Jackpot, and modern legend. They both came down from the Great White North, and they picked up second and third. Bandolito, by the way, was fourth. Okay, now let me add this little caveat to that particular race the exact a 2-1 returned $188.60 the parlay was 54 bucks why don't we ever hit ones like that you guys out there did you ever hit one this plus 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 parlay no it's always like <laughs> supposed to pay 80 bucks it paid me 12 dollars right it's just not right but anyway when we come back more racing action from where harris philadelphia they had some good races and you'll be privy to them right after these words Cardiac fashion up by two lengths, up to the outside, hands off Frank, chocolate crackers trying to split foes. It's showtime. It's all about the action. The 
odds. The wagers. It's all about who drives who. It's all you need to be part of the action. PA Harness Week, Harness Racing's fastest paced half hour. Saturdays, 10.30 a.m. on Comcast Sportsnet Philadelphia. Online at harnessweek.com. Well, hello there, Harness Racing fans, and welcome back to PA Harness Week. Along with Heather Vitale, I'm Steve Ross. I got to tell you, I forgot to give a couple of shout outs, but I have to. Big day, I was recognized, I felt like a freaking rock star at the track the other day on Derby Day. It was amazing. I want to say hi to, I hope I don't butcher these names, Cindy and her friend Chris. They watch the show every Saturday. I hope I, hope I didn't butcher your names, <laughs> How guys. How could you butcher Cindy and Chris? Are you, me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding? So I, she said, we watch the show every, you know, she says, are you Steve? Are you on the hardest racing show? I said, yeah, she went, oh my God! <laughs> she got that from me, oh my God! Is that what happened? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I also want to say, uh, get well to Paul O, who had open heart surgery, and his oh. brother came to me and said, please give him a shout out, and I hope I didn't butcher his name. But anyway, it was a fun day on Saturday. Okay, we are back. Sunday, the opener at Harris Philly, a condition based nominee of five races in in the afternoon, 16 dimes on the line, number four, cardiac fashion, a drop dead outfit with Georgie Knapp was one to five. Number one, sky full of lighters, Klieg lights or Zippos, your preference, nine to two <laughs> with Andrew McCarthy, the rest, double digit bombers. Fast and contested, opening quarter and cardiac fashion drives up on the outside, clearing hands off Frank. Up on the outside, Caviar Chase has been parked since the word go. Chocolate Crackers trapped in fourth around the turn. Outside, Sky Full of Lighters is second up, latched on the cover and four lengths away from the lead. Jamoki Jerry racing in six, moving to the outside. The trailer's still better believe it, eight lengths away from the lead. 55 for the half, 28 for the quarters. They race up the bank stretch, and the lead belongs to Cardiac Fashion. Hands off Frank, tracking in the pocket second. On the outside, Caviar Chase is third. Chocolate Crackers is trapped in fourth. Sky Full of Lighters now behind stall and cover, forced into a three wide move. Has four lengths of work to do. Towards the inside, better believe it saves ground. Jamoki Jerry to the outside. Around the far turn they go. The rink orders accomplished in 122 and 3 for Cardiac Fashion. Hands off Frank tightens down on the Georgie Knapp helmet. Outside, Sky Full of Lighters grinding third. Three lengths to come. Chocolate Crackers trapped in fourth. They straighten away for the stretch drive. Cardiac Fashion up by two lengths. Up to the outside. Hands off Frank. Chocolate Crackers trying to split foes. Sky Full of Lighters on the outside. It's Cardiac Fashion. Hands off Frank on the outside. Down to the finish. Hands off Frank. Number seven, Hands Off Frank. Off at 13 to 1 with White Hot. Brett Miller left and took the lead before Cardiac fashion seize command there they stay till the stretch hands off frank out guts the chalk and 151 and one number two chocolate crackers name i love off of 20 to one with dave miller got third and our charlotte mcbride caught up with a man they call super brett nowadays because he is so hot he's like winning off the hook his name brett miller all right thanks guys i'm here with brett miller brett you've had a, a couple good sundays here to what do you attribute your recent success uh, horsepower. <laughs> I've had some really good horses to drive and uh, you know this this business is definitely all about the horsepower. <clears throat> What's it feel like to have that success on, on one day? I think you had four wins on last Sunday and then four wins the Sunday before. What's that feel like? Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling you know I, truthfully I enjoy every race. I, I enjoy winning uh, four claimer. Uh, you know obviously you, you know you want to race the stake races, the stake horses but I truly enjoy racing every kind of horse. And for those that don't know, you haven't had just success here. You've had success at the Meadowlands, I know as well. Again, how are you so successful there as of late? Um, you know, honestly, the same thing. You know, I got some great guys to drive for, um, some very good stables with some very good horses. And uh, I mean, this business here, you know, you gotta do a lot of traveling, it's tough, but you gotta you gotta have the right horses to drive, and you know, and obviously, well, you know, once you get the good horses to drive, you gotta do something with them. And I've been very lucky. You mentioned the traveling just now. We see you at the Poconos, at Yonkers, at the Meadowlands here. How do you balance everything? Because I know you have a family too. Yes, that's it's tough. Um, you know, I have a, I have a four-year-old and a six-year-old and a nine-year-old, and uh, it's very tough. Uh, this time of year, it's you know, I don't get to see the kids a whole lot. Uh, it's a little tough on the kids, but they understand. They, you know, they're, 
they understand the horses and they understand, you know, what's going on. But, uh, yeah, it's a lot of traveling. And, you know, at the end of the summer, I'm definitely looking forward to <laughs> spending more time with the family. Maybe take a nice little vacation. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for joining us. We're going to yep. send it back to you guys. Thank you, Charlotte. And thank you, Brent. You are on a big, woo, what a hot run he's on. Yeah. Keep up the good work. Stick around when we come back. We're going to go and see a steak at Freehold. It's a biggie. It's for trotters, three-year-olds, and it's called the Dexter Cup. Don't go away. Habitat at 1-2, to two, leading it by 2 and looking strong in his 2015 debut. Life. It all comes down to the things you do. The places you see. The people you meet. It's all of the beautiful things the incredible things and the spectacular things that makes us feel unexplainable things. Life is going on. All you have to do is choose to live it. Full of life, Mohegan Sun Pocono. Welcome back. This is PA Harness Week. She's Heather Vitale. I'm Steve Ross, and we're going to Freehold. Why? Because they had the $133,000 Dexter Cup final for three year old open trotters. Number six, Habitat with Yannick Jingra for Ron Burke. Odds on at one to two. Number five, Apostles Creed, who won the limb, was two to one with Brett Miller. The rest, all double digit bombers. And here's the call. Habitat is getting away from Divisionist as Jingra just applied a few whip taps there and Habitat took off 127 and 4, a 29 second third quarter. Habitat now by length and a half. Divisionist on to the cones for a brave and up tuck and a late move from Apostles Creed on the outside, three and a half from the lead. Gabe the Bear Dean from the inside still third and they turn for home. And it's Habitat and he's completely wrapped up and just strolling away by four. Habitat in a sparkling 2015 debut dominates the Dexter Cup, goes all the way, Habitat. Yannick left with Habitat, grabbed the lead, and that was well, that. He wired him for fun, winning by three open lengths in 156 and four, number four. Divisionist, the limb runner-up, went off at 17 to one with Charlie Norris and got the belly. And number one, Gabe the Bear Dean. What a great name. 18 to one with Jordan <laughs> Stratton, and the only one of the four trained by Ray Schnitger in the race to hit the board, got third. All right, now we're going to take a road trip. We're heading out to Ohio. Yes, the Buckeye State. We're going to go to the Miami Valley. From I love Miami. Uh, well, not Florida, Ohio. Oh. Yeah, okay. So uh, we're going to check it's out. It's my these, second favorite Miami. These, uh, these age trotting mares. The purse is $86,500 here. It's a sassy, classy field of nine. Now, 2014 Trotter of the Year. Shaka Carey was in here, and she went behind the gate as the even money favorite. She was on front by the time they got to the half, but it was another award winner, the 2014 Trotting Mare of the Year. Classic Martine. She got a Great journey. She won in track record time in 152 and 2, and at odds of 15 to 1. And also, Cla Classic Martine becomes the sport's newest millionaire. Tim Tietrick in the bike for trainer Chris Oates. Char and Delight was second. Daylon Miracle was third. All right, Sunday at the 11th race at Miami Valley. The $75,000 Chip Noble Memorial for Mayor's four-year-olds and up. Number one, you're going to kiss me or not, with Danny Dubay was the 9-5 to five chalk and led every step of the way. Just last at the eek at a neck win over number three, Table Talk. 16-1 to one with Jody Jamison. Number two, Waz Mula, a 10-1 to one shot with James McDonald. Got third. And Heather, we're out of time, babe. I know, babe. Oh, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Next week, same bad time, same bad channel. And for all of us here, Bruce Casella, Charlotte McBride, my boo, Heather Vitale, I'm Steve Ross reminding you to pick up the pace just a taste. Get yourself high on harness. It's only natural.